the okay. button. Okay, so you love apple cider, right? You're like, oh my yes. god, it's Halloween. I love apple cider. I'll tell you what, Sean. I, like, not only do I love apple cider, but I have been experimenting with other things that just have the word cider on the label. Not experimenting like, you know, like, oh, maybe I should try this with a dude. I mean, like experimenting <laughs> like, uh, like, hey, it's got cider in the name, so it should probably be good. Right. So, OK, here, let me let me let me throw some things out at you. OK, number one, sparkling cider. Okay. Delicious. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, Sean. I made I made gravy and I added sparkling cider to it as like my deglazer, yeah. like like you know because I always do gravy in the pan, like the like the roasting pan that I make the turkey in. I deglaze the pan with with sparkling cider. Good. Oh, I added so much. Oh, because it was like all like turkey and apple flavored. Oh, it's delicious. I can see it. Okay. Um. Uh. I can't remember who it was that was. So I, I, um, somebody was selling the hard cider. It was like, a, but it was like a sparkling hard cider. I think it was, I think it was Dos Equis. Mm. No, it wasn't Dos Equis. If you're going hard cider or yeah, I guess it's hard. It's not really hard cider. It's more cider beer. Angry Orchard, top notch. There's I've had original those. sin. I've had those. Original sin's good. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Here's, here's the next one. Ready? Ray Apple cider donuts. Oh, yeah. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, that was those. Those are delicious. well. I was bringing up those are one of those things. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so glad that these are at work, so that way I don't oh, go yeah. buy like four dozen well, of these. I was bringing up your apple cider because that's very much a fall kind of you know Halloween Thanksgiving time frame, but we're kind of in the winter time frame, right? And I think I still have a gallon in the freezer. Uh, you know what I've discovered? I mean, I haven't discovered. It. I've known this, but I don't really want to say it because I'm worried like people will judge me. Eggnog, Richard. I got some. God, I've damn got it. some Evan Williams eggnog. I hate oh, it. it's so good. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Oh, I, hate I love it. it. And everyone in this house loves it, and I can't stand God it. God bless everyone in your house, Richard. No. Who is oh it? Oh my God, she's smiling at me. Yeah, wife, she's smiling well, at me. You know why? Because she knows. I haven't even said it. She knows exactly what I'm talking about. What am I talking about? <laughs> I knew it, Richard. We're gonna have a party. We're gonna it. have a party at your house. It's gonna be an eggnog party. I'm gonna bring my Evan Williams no, bottle. You are mm. not having an eggnog party at you know my what? house. No. Tell no. I tell refuse. Amanda I'm gonna come over Christmas night, and what we're gonna do because we're recording this before Christmas, Ugh. and I will make because she'll love this as she loves eggnog. I will make us some Tom and Jerry's. Like it's like fresh eggnog with like booze in it. That's delicious. Sean says he has something called Tom and Jerry's. It's eggnog with booze. It's in like it. it's basically eggnog with booze in it. Oh, now you got she's all <laughs> excited. Mm. You know what? Maybe yeah. We're, her and I are doing a podcast now. You go away. No, fuck <laughs> that. And fuck your eggnog. I hate mm, it. I I've hate already had it. two glasses. I hate it so much. I always think like every year when I get it, because I told Tiff to pick me up a bottle. I'm like, do I really like eggnog? And I poured like a little bit and chugged it. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is delicious. I refuse. Mm. I refuse. You know what it is? It. The only way it ends up in this house is if somebody else goes and buys it because I refuse. Because is Amanda it. like come from like German heritage, kind of like like a lineage? I, I mean, I am. Well, I mean, everybody. That's true. Here does. I was just saying, maybe that's what it is. Because Tom and Jerry is like a very German wintry mix drink. Oh, I can't stand. You it. know what's great? No. You know what's great about eggnog, Richard? You can use it as your cold open because <laughs> <laughs> you served it chilled. Uh, All right, not your. Now, now you need a pilot cleanser. Let's talk some Speeder Man. Huh, huh, huh. Can't stand it. And I'll tell you what. There are so many people that agree with me. We're a small number, but we're <laughs> rowdy and we're feisty. There aren't many of us, but we got spunk. I do feel like that's one of those you come up at a party and you, it's like a 50-50 chance you're going to get a bad reaction. Like, hey, guys, I brought eggnog. Mm. What the fuck? But you know what you never hear that of? Cider. No, oh, no. You know why? Because everybody, everybody does loves love cider. cider. Who doesn't love cider? Hey, guys, I showed up with some cider. Hey! 
fantastic. Hey guys, I show up with eggnog. Get out of my house. <laughs> Shame upon you and your family. <laughs> All right, let's talk about show. <gasps> What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. Sean. Podcast like romance, Sean. And we are speaking the language of romance. Sean, okay, so here's the thing. Here, here's the thing, okay? So we're going to talk about Spider-Man. And so I know what you like to do at first is you like to give your non spoiler review. And so what I feel we should do, because I want to talk about this movie (laughs) so bad, we're going to have our non spoiler review and it's going to last all of Yeah, We've already agreed to it, Richard. What's the spoiler review? Non spoiler review. The non spoiler review is, Hey, you should go see this movie because it is very good. Yeah. Go to the movie theater right now. Don't go on the internet at all. Stay away from the internet for the rest of your life until you see this movie. And you should go yesterday. All right. Now, spoiler time. And the end. All right. Now we're going to talk about the entire movie and we're going to talk about how much we love. Hi, Richard. So usually whenever I see movies, I don't take notes, but I took so many notes just to be prepared because there was so much that happened. Did you take notes while you were watching the movie? No, I did it afterwards while I was driving like you should. Right. (laughs) <laughs> cop pulls you over what are you doing are you drunk no well yes on spider-man yeah you'd be like uh listen i just watched spider-man and then the cop would be like oh my god did you see it and then you're like yeah i saw it and he's like me too and then you guys would yeah. high five because that is the reaction that you have with anybody if you've seen this movie and th- and you find somebody that also has seen the movie, you go, have you seen Spider-Man? Yeah, I've seen it. Oh, I've seen it too. High five. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I love. That's so- the reaction. That's, that's the reaction I had wanted to have with everybody. As I was walking out of the theater, I'd be like, Hey, we all saw Spider-Man. High five. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what I, what I enjoyed about, so like kind of before getting into it, it's like we, lo- we talk a lot about like of our theater experience. But it's been a while since we've had like a theater experience movie. And the theater I went to was probably like 90% full. is a capacity of 88 people. So it's that smaller theater I've been going to in the town about 30 minutes away. And yeah. I loved it because this is the first movie where I've had people like cheering and like legit fan, like fanning out over stuff. And like three nice. or four different situations came up and people were clapping or cheering and like I stopped and just looked around and I probably had the biggest smile on my face because it just felt good in my soul to have people like happy about a movie again together. Yeah, yeah, I could totally see that. That's nice. I did not have I didn't have like people cheering and stuff like that. My theater was fairly empty. However, I have I uh orchestrated my own special theater experience because before I went to the theater, I, cause, because Sean, the, the, the show that I went to was at nine 30 mm. in the morning on a Saturday, I love that early movie, early morning movie. Oh, oh so you walk good. out, it's still it's light so out. It's like, Oh, I can go get breakfast mm. now. Mm. See? Okay. Glad you brought that up because here's what I did because I'm a sneaky <laughs> sneak. All right. I got myself breakfast and I stuck it. Inside my coat. <laughs> stuck it in my pants. I snuck in. They're like, is that a sausage in your pants? It. Like, hey, go look into my dick. It's like And then you're like, Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. And then he's like, Wait, is it? And then you're like, Yes. Hey, hey. No, hey, I mean Greg, come here. Psst, come here. It's a biscuit sausage egg miss muffin. <laughs> I ate I ate I ate a biscuit sandwich. Oh, I ate a sausage biscuit that's, sandwich. That's awesome. It was 9 30 in the morning and I was sitting there and I was watching Spider Man and I was eating breakfast sandwich. Sean I'm not gonna lie. It was he was easily like in the top ten experiences. That I I've had this entire I get year. it because like we had game day that day and like I felt bad because you kept asking everybody like, "Hey, you want to go see a movie with me?" And everybody's like, "No, I'm gonna go see it somewhere else." I know everybody. And I was I would have went a second time, but I had to pick something up, so I couldn't. So I, I had I had prior prior stuff going on. 
you did have a legitimate yeah, thing. Yeah, otherwise I would have been there. I would have told my mom and dad, I'm like, hey, listen, you're watching the kiddo, and I'm watching Spider-Man. My son would be like, you're going to go see Spider-Man? I'm like, yeah, for the second time. Can I go? No. Yeah, <laughs> punch. Ah, yeah. Go hang out with Grandma and Papa. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I felt bad that I didn't go. But when you walked in at game day, because I got there, you know, like 11.15-ish, because we started at 11. You got there like 11.30, quarter till. You had the biggest smile on your face. Like, you look like you just, like, so like you got, like, you got the blowjob you didn't even ask for. Like, you're just sitting yep, there. 100%. And then we high-fived, because I, because I, we high five and I was like, yeah. yeah. He's like, did wow. you like it? You're like, yeah. I'm like, me too. And they're like, you want to talk about it? And everybody in the group's like, no spoilers. And we're like, you should have fucking went and saw it with him. <laughs> Punch. You <laughs> sons of bitches. Uh but like I said, it's been a long time since I've seen a movie that I was a hyped for. Like I bought these tickets early and uh, unfortunately I didn't get screwed out of my seat, but the theater I go to now has like reserved seats. Like uh-huh. you pick your seat and like okay. that works. Okay. As long as like whoever doesn't like you get a seat and the seat you get isn't one that like somebody's like, Hey, that's my fucking seat. And you're like, yeah, I know, but that fucker's sitting in my seat. And then you got to go over there and deal with that. Because I right, walked right. in, and I was like, that's my seat. And I'm like, I asked him. I tested him. I tested the person that was sitting there. I was like, hey, where's G3? Because I was looking right at the sign that said G3. <laughs> <laughs> and him and his whole family like, oh, it's down there. It's like, yeah, you better fucking be down there. So I walk, and I sit. Now I'm waiting for, like, like somebody. Because the last time I had this experience, it was terrible. I saw um, Venom. And when I went, somebody was sitting in my seat. So, like, I moved, like, six times because every seat I sat at, like, somebody else was coming. It was like, that's my seat. And the pe- people didn't move from my seat. But I moved down. I'm sitting there, and these, this couple comes in, and they basically sit in, like, the wheelchair accessible spots because I guess they went ahead and sold them since it was about that time. And it was like, so there was a okay. me, a seat, a space, like a big space, and then a seat by itself. And so this guy, and I guess his girlfriend, wife, or friend, or sister, or whatever, you know, he sat by me uh-huh. and then she was sitting by herself. And so I was like, Hey, you can totally have my seat. I'll trade you. Cause I mean, like yeah. I'm by myself, so it doesn't matter. And so I was sitting there the whole time waiting for somebody to be like, Hey, you're sitting in my seat, chick. I'm like, fuck. You got to deal with that drama, but it didn't happen. And... So I got to enjoy this movie sitting all by myself. Yeah. I nice. liked it. Oh, and the reclining leather seats too. Oh, it's great. Ooh. But Richard, this movie, Let's get into it. So it kicked off, I think, the best way you could have. Basically, the last Spider-Man and this one are like side by side, right? Like there's no... Yep, we hit the yeah, ground there's running. there's no break in it. And, you know, right away you're getting like this like, oh my God, we know who it is. We know who Spider-Man is. It's Peter Parker. Fuck this guy. Hey, this is the chick that's holding his hand. Are they doing more than that? I don't know. Check out the tabloids. That's that's actually really accurate. That's That's... I mean, almost verbatim, exactly yeah. what happened. And then they run away, and they like, oh, my God, he got to go to jail. And it's like, fuck, I'm going to jail, so what do I need? I need a lawyer. Dam- damage control yeah. showed up. Yeah, they went and... Th- Which they were, I think they were They were going to do a show on, but I think the, the, the show ended up getting scrapped. Yeah, it was supposed to be uh, on, like, uh, ABC, I believe. Yeah, it was going to be an ABC show called Damage Control about, based on the comic called damage because it was essentially going to be like the office but in the marvel universe yeah yeah because it was like hey could tony stark not you know like destroy half the city when aliens show up because we got to rebuild all yeah it's like you know you get rid of tony stark like probably 90 percent of the shit doesn't happen which they kind of addressed in the the uh in spider-man homecoming Yeah. yeah A little bit. It was his drones that caused all the issues. And they're like, there you are. Because in this, they talk to Peter. They're like, there you are, drones. He's like, well, I mean, yeah, he left them for me. Fuck. Oh, well, no, I, I just meant like the whole like, you know, destroying half the city shit. Because because Vulture in Homecoming was with a crew that was oh. like working on rebuilding the city after the yeah, Avengers Yeah, I was thinking thing. far from home. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But Richard, he's in trouble. He's got... You know, lawyer stuff going on. So what's he need? He needs a lawyer. And where in the Marvel he universe do you find a lawyer? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They just, like, the damage control thing happens. I was like, oh, it's damage control. That's kind of cool. I was, like, I was like, well, I don't know, like, federal investigations and, like, court cases and all this shit. I was like, 
this seems kind of boring. Like, how are we going to get past all this? And then, and then there's a, then there's a, there's a stick. And I was like, no, no. Sean, it was terrible. fucking Matt Murdoch. Apparently it was Matt. Fucking I want to ask Richard. So Aunt May was calling him by his first name. Do you think Aunt May knew a little something, something about Matt Murdoch? I mean, maybe, which is totally, which I'm totally fine yeah. with. Got him. Not only was it was it Matt Murdock, it was Charlie Cox. It was. Matt so the question is like is Which is fucking crazy because just last week No, not even last week. It was like Yeah, it was the like, week of uh, Spider Man like, releases when the Hawkeye episode came out. Yeah. Yeah. So the Hawkeye episode so the Hawkeye episode comes out and we find out that the big the you know like like the big guy that Hawkeye's worried about this entire time. I mean, spoilers there. The big bad guy you're worried about this whole time is fucking yeah. Kingpin, and it's Vincent D'Onofrio as fucking Kingpin. And then you're like, holy shit! Well, if Kingpin's here, then that means you could you could bring you could bring Daredevil and they in. Did. And then fucking three days later, they're like, you know what? You're absolutely <laughs> right. We could. It was a great scene. It was around the kitchen table. They get him out of it, and somebody chucks a brick. He's like, "I'm a good lawyer." Somebody chucks a brick through a window, and they, he catches it like right as Peter Parker's putting his hands up to catch it. And I like that they don't know yep. he's Daredevil, right? How did you do that? I'm a, I'm a very, very good, good lawyer. <laughs> and I like that they just did that one scene. Like, like he wasn't a big overarching piece of this. It was just enough of a wink and a nod to the audience to be like, "Hey, guess what? Hey, that happened, and then that's it." Like, do you see? Do you see? Does Daredevil show up at all in the entirety of the rest of the movie? Nope. We got other shit to do. That's it. That's all you get. You get that little bit. Yep. You're welcome. Um, so, yeah, you get that kick. He basically tells him, like, hey, you're you're in the free and clear. Like, they can't charge you with anything, which that they kind of sped through that. It was kind of like, a, oh, let's, uh, you know, let's fix this plot hole, fix this kind of, you know, issue a little bit. And, you know, I'm just a good lawyer that well, fixed I, it. Yeah, I yeah, I agree. Like they kind of just like yes, they sped past it, but like again, like you know, like I just said a, a minute ago, you know, you're watching it and you're like, "Well, fuck, like is this just going to be like fucking a procedural yeah, crime I don't drama? want Is that going to be this I don't want movie? SVMCU, right? Like I don't want that. I want to see Spider-Man web slinging around kicking people's asses. But it all And so like I'm fine. Yeah, go ahead. Be past it. Yeah, okay. Matt Murdock shows up and everything's fixed. Like, yep, I buy it. They kind of speed through the season. So like a lot of that was happening like August time frame, because like they basically see them go to school and they all apply Mm -hmm. to their schools, which they didn't make the all the classes because basically it's like, hey, Spider Man, and these are his friends and they're fucking horrible people because they save the world, which again kind of makes us a little head scratchy, but you know. At that point in time, they, they don't get into any of their schools. So Peter's like, you know what? I know somebody that might be able to fix this issue. And he's going to go to yep. one and only Doctor Strange. This takes place around Halloween. Yep. So he has uh, 23 bleakers. So just Street. to pull the curtain back a little bit for the audience, we are recording this the day before the season finale of Hawkeye. And in this movie, kind of skipping ahead a little bit, it takes place basically from like June all the way and ends in like Christmas time. So, sp- yeah, yeah, you're so right. Spider Man, I've heard people kind of talk about this. Like, Spider Man, when he's kind of, you know, web slinging in the snow, is about the time the Hawkeye stuff has taken place. So, yeah. I don't. Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even think about I didn't consider that, but yeah, you're yeah, absolutely so right. So I don't know if there's gonna be any crossover like on Hawkeye or not. I doubt it, but um and also timeline wise, I didn't realize this. This is taking place in the year twenty twenty four. Oh, okay. So Hawkeye and Spider Man take place in twenty four. Okay. You're like, oh, how? Yeah, because well, of the time jump. So there's a f- No, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you are right. Yeah, because it's cause of the five years thing. Yep. Okay. But yeah, so let's so they basically that's how he gets this show started. He goes to Doctor Strange and is like, "Hey, I need help." And I feel like this is a little bit of kind of like the, you know, a little bit of wackiness because I think a lot of people were assuming that Doctor Strange was going to have some ulterior motives, a la uh, Mephisto. Like that was a theory that that wasn't actually Doctor Strange. Oh, I didn't, I didn't hear yeah. that. I, I, I stayed away from. Aside from the trailers, that was it. I stayed away from everything else. Yeah, I kind of wish I did because there are some big reveals that I was expecting to happen. And when they did, I think if I didn't, if I came in like completely blind, they would have had more like, oh, mm-hmm. shit, I didn't know this. 
But yeah, I mean, yeah. when you're on the internet or listening to podcasts, it's really difficult to not see that. Yeah, that's why in the non-spoiler review we said stay yeah. away from the goddamn. Yeah, internet. don't even look at pictures. But I really feel like a lot of this stems, and maybe this will go into kind of what this next phase is about, but as he goes into the Sanctum Santorum, he is asking Doctor Strange to help him out, right? He says, hey, can you forget everything that was going on, or have people forget? Can you make a spell so everybody forgets? Yeah, and so I really feel like these next couple uh, movies is really going to be centered around Doctor Strange's hubris. Um, possibly. I mean, well... I mean, you got to consider though, like, yes, th- I mean, it might, it might deal a little bit with that. I don't know. Like you got to go all the way to the end credits to f- realize, I think what the next movie is going to be. Yeah. About. But I mean, this, he was just like, oh, I can do this. Yeah. We'll get this set up. Everybody forget, you know, that Peter Parker was Spider-Man. Yeah. And then, you know, you start being like, well, what about, well, we need, you know, my girlfriend to remember. We need MJ to remember. Oh, well, we need my buddy. Well, Ant-Man, when she found out it almost killed her and that just, Oh, and happy, happy should probably remember too. Cause, yeah, and yeah. Then, so there's this big explosion of like, oh, you just fucked this spell up. Because yeah, be like, hey, you changed the spell six times, you dingus. Yeah, and so then it's like, uh, well, what's gonna happen? And we, and he's like, well, nothing's gonna happen because right now I got it all, I got it all put together in this yeah. little box, so nothing bad's so gonna good. happen. We're all fine. And then he's like, oh, okay, well, we'll just do another one. Because, I mean, it's not like I could go. T- and this, It's not like I could go talk to the college admissions people or anything. And then Strange is like, wait, <laughs> you didn't go talk to the college admissions people? You didn't think that was something? You, just, you came to me and wanted me to alter <laughs> reality with a spell and you didn't even think before that to just go and have a conversation. I love that. Like, I mean, because that's very much what a 16, 17 year old kid would think, right? A hundred percent. And also, like, it kind of, I feel like there, I, you know, that there was one guy in the audience that was like, why doesn't he just go talk to a college admissions yeah. person and be like, hey, can you, fi-? like, why is, why is he doing all that? Like, I feel like Dr. Strange was that one guy in yeah. the audience. Like, why don't you just go talk to somebody? Yeah. Well, and you know, there, oh. there was everybody in the audience was thinking, it's like, well, this is a Marvel movie. Like, like, I mean, it's just, you know, you got to get there some way. Right. And then when he says it and he's like, oh, you mean I can do that? Like, that's a 16 or 17 year old <laughs> thought. Like, oh, I can actually go and talk to the adults and they might understand. Yeah. Odds are one of those schools will let you guys in. Yeah. I also think it's a little better than, you know, trying to change the entire world with a magic. Yeah, you spell. know, a lot of like high up people, like I'm sure Steve will write your letter of recommendation. I'll write you one. Bruce Banner <laughs> will write you one. Like, I'm sure we can get you in. Like, we've got some pull. <laughs> oh. oh, well, I'll go talk to the professor. I guess the admissions president. But yeah, I'll, I guess I'll go do that then. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you should go do that. So, you know, the first, like, and that was a good, like, 20, 30 minutes into the movie. And what I liked, like, it started out kind of slow, but it was a good enough pacing that once it got into it, I felt good. Like, I think Ghostbusters yeah. was better paced, but this, like, it once it got into the action, like, it really just, it had a good, like, kind of rhythm to it. And yeah, I would say maybe the first, like, yeah, the, maybe the first like fifteen is slow, but I I would say like once we once once we head to Doctor Strange's place, like I would say from that point on, then is is the yeah movie, agreed is what the movie's really about. So I mean, again, you saw all the trailers, so you really kind of saw like the first interaction with like Doc Ock and Goblin and that. So what were your thoughts when you actually saw it on the screen? Um. So Doc Ock shows up and then you realize it's like they 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 got pulled there from like the basically the moment before they died. Well, no, it was the moment they realized who Spider-Man was. So because right. like uh the Sandman, he wasn't he never died, but once he realized that Spider-Man was Peter Parker, that's the moment he got sucked out and sent to this universe. Mhm. Mhm. And so 
I thought Doc, Doc, Doc looked good. Yeah, for his age and everything, yeah. Looked fantastic. The arms look good. I, I honestly think, like, in terms of the actual fight between between Spider-Man and Doc Ock, I would say that the fight was a, was way more action-packed than in the other movies just because you can yeah. do more, you know, they can do a lot more. Yeah. And I love like the recognition, like once he gets some pin, he's like, wait, you're not Peter Parker. And like the confusion on both their faces, is like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then the, uh, nanobites get on his, you know, claws and it's all like, Oh, yeah. Ha, ha. yeah because he's like, Hey motherfucker, this is 20. This is like 20 years in the future. Yeah. No, they get on there. I just fucked your couch. New device detected. Wait, what? <laughs> he just blew two pairs in. <laughs> Which I enjoyed. Like, I mean, because I, you know, I wasn't really sure how this was going to work. If it was going to be like right away that they had, you know, because spoiler alert, if you're already this far and didn't stop, you know, the other Spider Man are in this movie. And I was worried it was going to be more of a like team up right from the beginning. And the oh, okay. other thought I had is like it was going to be more of a like you have to kill all of them because that's what Spider Man did, and that seems like that's not really the case. Um, no, in fact, I would say that I would say that this that the that the plot arc in this I would say is more more Spider Man than 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 before. Agreed. Because so so he fights Doc Ock. And then right before he gets pulled back to to Doctor Strange, he sees the Green Goblin. Yes. And I'm not going to lie, William Defoe knocked it out of the park. Oh. Mwah. So Mwah. I don't know how much you, I, I, I heard some stuff or read a couple things. So apparently when he was asked to join this movie, he said, I'm not doing uh-huh. a spot cameo. Like, I want to do the scenes. I want to be in the action. Like I want to do this. Like I, I just want to do it. Like I don't want to just show up because apparently in the originals, yeah. he did a lot of his own stunts and stuff. I so believe he, it. I think I he believe did as it. much as he could in this one as well. And I, William Defoe is so fucking good. And almost he's good oh, in everything. Yeah. And I love, he's just one of those actors that you just want to put him in every yeah. movie. Just, just what, just do what, do whatever oh, you Boondock want. Saints. Oh, too far. That was definitely too far. Like he just, he makes he, like, he ma- like he legitimately makes choices and then he just fucking knocks it out of the park. Well, he just has I love fun it. with it. And yeah, I, well, well, I'm saying like he makes choices and he, he, he convinces you of, you know, which is, I mean, it's acting. I mean, he makes choices and then he convinces you that of the choices, you know, the performance choices that he makes. Agreed. So I guess, you know, so all the baddies show up and it's kind of discovered that like, oh my gosh, in their world, they end up dying, except I don't think Sandman dies. So I'm not sure about that, how that plays in it. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember because well, like you and I saw Spider-Man three together and I'm not going to lie. That was the only, that was the one and only time that I, I, I never went back to Spider-Man three. <laughs> My mom's got it recorded for the kids and they watched every now and then. And so I kind of pick it up, but in this one, even then, like he was helping Spider-Man in the beginning, like saving him from Electro. See, I thought he killed, I thought Spider-Man in, in Spider-Man three, I thought he killed him because he was wearing the suit. He was wearing the, the no, symbiote he, uh, suit. I do remember this. So he tried to. So they're fighting in the sewer, and he opens up a bunch of water stuff, and it makes them melt away. Right, right. But he ends up going to the out, like the poo area and starts drying out and becomes oh. Sandman again. But I think in the end, it, it's basically okay. like a, he's like, hey, I'm sorry. It was an accident, and Peter forgives him kind of thing. Okay. But okay. I guess my question with that is, like, how do you feel about, like, all these baddies – because essentially, like, you know, Green Goblin kind of gets control of his, you know, alter ego, his, you know, other side, his Jekyll. Yes. And I'll tell you what, like, first thing, first thing Goblin does when he shows up, he breaks that mask. And I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Because you know what? Like, William Defoe doesn't no. need a fucking mask on his face 
to give you the green goblin. And f- yeah. Like he just doesn't and flying need it. around. And what oh, do we get? Yeah, we get the, the hood. we get the old the old school purple hood over his over his oh, I loved it. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. yeah. Fan fucking tastic. But how do you feel? Because it's kind of like you know, uh, all the baddies are there, and they're like, "Hey, I can fix whatever's happening to you, and we'll send you back, and you might not die." All of them were on board except Doc Ock because Doc Ock had the whole electro thing. Right. So, how do you feel about that? Right. That like all these baddies were kind of like, oh, "Okay, well, I guess if you can fix us, then maybe we'll go back and survive." Like, how do you feel about that kind of plot that they're going with? Like I said, you know, I like I was I was fine with that. I felt like it was the most Spider-Man story thus far because you know, this is a different this is a different Spider-Man and he's and he's he's coming from a place of like look, you know, like I don't know you guys, so I'm going to but I want to help you. It's not it wasn't a question of like you're bad. You've done bad things. So now it's time to go away so you can die. It's I want to help you. Well, these were like, which is that's what Peter yeah, would have done. Because I mean, like Spider-Man villains, there's some that are just bad, but most of these villains had something happen to them that pushed them into this. That's yeah. The, I mean, they're the, they're all the the classic comic. You know, they they fell into oh, I fell into a vat of electric eels. Yeah. Oh, I you know. And I, I tripped and fell into fucking radioactive sand or blah de blah oh, blah blah. You sounds know what like I mean? we've all fallen into some bad things. <laughs> yeah, and I like that they really kind of paid homage to like the 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 other two series, right? Because I remember when like the second series came out, everyone's like, "Oh my god!" Like we're creating a whole new Spider Man. We just had the Tobey Maguire, and they had two. First one was good. Second one wasn't that great. Okay, I'm 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 going to be honest. I'm being honest here, okay? And I feel I I I feel like I've said this before. I'm sure somebody can go back into an older episode and correct me. But I am almost because I feel because I I felt this way for a long time. I liked Andrew Garfield. I liked Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. Andrew Garfield to me was kind of the I would say like Andrew Garfield for me was was closer to Spider Man than Toby was because Andrew Garfield had more of like the whippy you know kind of like wisecracky kind of guy where like you know he'd like make jokes and shit like that while he was shooting webs and being fucking Spider Man and so to me that felt like that was the Spider-Man I remember reading in comic books. Yeah, I've heard you say that before. Um, Because to me, okay, like the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, and I've went back and watched it. Because I always felt like he, yeah, I always felt like he was considered like the, you know, the the, the D-list Spider-Man. Who, Tobey Maguire or Garfield? No, uh, Garfield. I think it was more the movies, because Tobey Maguire, like one and two are pretty good. But if you go back and watch those. And that feels more like a Supermanification of Spider Man. Like, because we were just a mm-hmm. few years away from, like, I mean, like, because when did the last Superman come out? Like, 89, 90. So we were less than a, yeah. we were less than a decade away from the last Superman movie. So I feel like this was, you know, them being like, hey, this is our Spider Man slash Superman movie. Like, it just kind of had mm-hmm. that feel. And, like, the Andrew Garfield mm-hmm. one was more of like, oh, well, let's do like an actual Spider Man. But that was going on like right right as the MCU was kind of kicking off. And so it kind of fell through on the second one because they had plans for a three. And so then they're just like, all right, well, we're going to reboot it a third time with this, you know, Holland guy. And he's going to be in the MCU. And I think he's done a great job. I've I've yeah, I've been happy with him so far. He's he's come. I mean, like I've I've had my I've had slight issues with with Tom Holland. But I would say that overall he's been he's been he's been great. Overall, he's been fantastic. No, I have I have minor notes, but it doesn't matter because nobody listens <laughs> to me. But basically, they find out we need to capture all these guys and send them back. So they, you know, Doctor Strange sets them up with a little thing that can you know capture them and put them in there. Uh, and that kind of starts yep. like the second plot of this movie, where you know Doctor Strange is like, "All right, capture all these guys. We're sending them back." And each one of them's like, "Well, when I go back, I'm going to die." Like you know, Green Goblin. And Doc Ock, it's like, well, you're dead. And then Electro's like, hey, Lizard Dude, you're dead. And it's like, well, what's going to happen to me? Oh, shoot, I'm probably going to die. 
And that kicks in the plot yep. that you're talking about. And that starts our struggle with Doctor Strange and Spider-Man. Doctor Strange is like, I don't give a fuck. Like, we're not screwing up this, you know, this universe. Because you don't mess with the multiverse. You fuck shit up when you do that. You you don't mess with the multiverse. No. It's like rule one in the, in the Sorcerer Supreme yep, Handbook. But Peter messes with the multiverse. And thinks he messes with the multiverse. With Aunt May saying, hey, that's not you. Because he's like, it's not my problem. She's like, that's not you. That's not us. Yeah. And I completely agree. And I completely agree. That's something that is a hundred. That is totally something May would say. And that's totally something that Peter would be like, you know what? You're absolutely right. Because these people would show up and he'd be like, I, I need to help them. Okay. But before that, I want to get to overall like how do you feel like let's like let's just take excluding green goblin how did you feel about the other villains in general uh like jamie let's go with jamie fox's oh, i loved i think he redeemed himself because i think in the first one that he was at yes i don't think they used him well but in this one, it no. played very well. Because basically, like, you kind of forget in that movie that he's just this guy who's a loner, who's like, he's like, there's nothing special about me. And all of a sudden, he gets these awesome powers. And does, the, I, does this movie not, I feel like, teach you a little bit that you can have the right ingredients and still make a bad cake? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, I would say movie making is more of a chemistry than it is just like cooking. Because cooking, you can fuck up. It's like, oh, shoot, I put too much pepper in it. Let me do this and this and this, and I can fix it. Yeah, Fix it. But in a cake, if you like, oh, I've got all like the best things in the world, but you don't do it right, it comes out shitty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because they didn't play it like the lizard guy. I don't think he was really needed per se, but he was a good kind of extra part. Um, yeah, I felt, I felt like... Uh, like lizard was probably, I think the most marginal, like he was the one that was kind of like on the yeah. margins, but I feel like all the other, I feel like every single other villain got like, a like a moment in Agreed. the sun, you know what I mean? Which, which I was, which I was super happy yeah. with. And, and like you said, like in some cases it kind of redeemed them, you know, uh, you know, I think, Jamie Foxx obviously proved like, Hey, that, Hey, that electro performance, that wasn't me. I wasn't like, that was, that was a weird CG blue guy. <laughs> that wasn't Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx knows how to bring it. And Jamie Foxx brings his well, and like, and he brought his moles A-game. from wings. Like I thought he did a good job as Sandman. Like I enjoyed him in three, but the movie was crappy. And in this, I think they, he was a good part of it. Cause his whole thing, he's like, I want to go back. Cause I have a kid. Yeah. He's like, I just want to go home. Like, like whatever, do whatever the fuck you guys got to do. Like, as, as long as I get home, exactly. I don't Exactly. It's like, hey, you know, you stay here. Don't stay here. I don't care. I got to go see my kid because that's why I do all the things I do. Yes, 100%. Um, we talked about Doc Ock, Lizard, Electro. Goblin, uh, I thought, knocked out of the park on both sides of it. As the baddie, as the yes. goodie. Um, yes. I mean... I feel like it, he kind of became the focal point, which I like because he's kind of like Spider-Man's, you know, Joker, right? Like they made him like, 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 were you expecting like, hey, you know who the main villain is going to be for this fucking movie? Green Goblin played by William Defoe. Then you're like, what? That dude's like old, isn't he? He can't do that. He did it, Richard. And he did it well. Like that. I think that was the thing that kind of threw me the most was like. Hey, like Green Goblin's gonna be the fucking villain. Like he's your villain. Yeah, and like I'm like, yeah. And that's what's interesting because they look because there's a couple things they point out in all these different universes, right? Like, so you know, when Green Goblin came here, he's like, There's no Oscorp. Like, I, I don't even exist right. here. And so you wonder if this is a thing that'll kind of trigger like, oh, him in this universe will see that, and now there will be a Green Goblin in this. Um, you know, mm-hmm. when they're all together and they're like, you know the Tobey Maguire and Garfield are both like, well, we've never worked in a group. And the MCU Spider-Man's like, oh, don't worry, guys. I have, you know, I'm an Avenger. And they're like, oh, my God, that's great. What's an Avenger? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? Are you in a that? band? What, what instrument do you play? <laughs> um, okay, so so they go, so so Tobey Maguire, like, basically, like, pseudo traps strange and gets that magic box and then 
takes all the bad guys to his apartment where he's like, I'm going to fix you guys and you guys are going to be awesome. And nor and goblin helps him because I don't know if you know this, Sean, but uh, Norman Osborn is something of a scientist. Everybody in that moment cracked. Like when you saw like, Oh my God, we're going to do this stuff. He's like, I don't know if you know this, but I'm somewhat of a scientist myself. (laughs) Everybody's like nailed it. The and so like what I love about this too is like you know that is a huge meme in meme world right like you see that all the time right the one I yep. was a little worried once they did that that they were going to kind of overplay their hand is when all three Spider Man got together you were going to have a bunch yeah of and I was other. like oh like maybe don't do that because the, when they get together it's like a very dramatic moment you know after Aunt May dies um, there is there is one yeah I was just okay so now. We need to get to the first like big emotional moment that had well yeah one yeah the first big emotional moment that had yeah. me like weep weeping like a baby because I did I'm not gonna lie I teared up there were in, in in my in my immediate memory there were three distinct moments which which I which I fell apart uh, just I a think little I got bit four in my list that was that was number one. Number one was yeah. Aunt May gets, I'll tell you what, like I was like, she, cause cause so Aunt May gets smacked in the back with that glider and it looks like that glider folds her shit in fucking yeah. half. Right. But then later she like gets up and I'm like, how the fuck is yeah. she fine? She's kind of walking around. I was like, oh, okay, well maybe they aren't going to kill her. I'm like, oh, okay. Well maybe she is fine. Maybe that would be magic. Just- Okay. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, she's not fine. Oh, oh she's dead. Yep. All right. Oh, okay. that's blood. Well, they didn't show it because it's PG 13, but I know that's blood. But then she says the line, yeah. Sean. When did, I can't remember when she said, is she standing when she says it or does she fall? Okay. No, she's, she's, not, she's down. She's down on the ground and she says the line, which I'm not going to say because that leads into my other. Like I almost fell apart moment, yeah. but so like, so anyway. kind of talking about that too, like in, in MCU world, we've not heard, seen anything of uncle Ben, right? I'm assuming he's right. gone. Um, and I, and we've talked about it before. Like we really like that this kind of sped up a lot of the Spider-Man kind of stuff. Cause again, we've seen it twice. Why do we need to see uncle Ben die? You know? And you know exactly. what? And I'll t- MCU is like, oh sure, yeah, you don't, you no, you don't need to see Uncle Ben die. Let let's let you get hooked into Aunt May, like everybody is, and then we'll fucking kick you in the yeah. nutsack. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, okay, so legitimate question, which I honestly do not know the answer to, in the MCU, is there an Uncle Ben? Uh, so the only reference that I have recalled seeing slash hearing is that the luggage he takes. Has I think a bin on it or You're right. a BP You're right. on it, but yeah, um, I mean I'd assume that he's gone somehow um, with everything that. But it, but I don't know if it had anything to do with the spite with with Spider Man. No, thing. it seems like that's not the case, and I feel like they kind of like so like we're always like, well, we don't need another you know origin story. And I feel like we didn't right. we didn't get one. It's just like, oh, he's Spider Man because something happened. And we're like, oh, well, Uncle Ben must have died. This stuff must have happened. And at this point, which is smart, I think they're like, oh, well, you know who will make you know we'll make the MCU Uncle Ben. We'll we'll make it Aunt May. And I feel like Aunt May has kind of filled the yeah. role of the Uncle Ben in this universe. Yeah. Okay. Yes, a hundred percent. Because okay, so. Yeah, well, I'll go ahead and go into into moment number two because I was going to discuss like one thing that had me kind of going, wait a minute, but I th- I feel like this needs to lead into moment number two. Moment number two, three Spider Men are together, right? Okay, so they all find all three of them find each other, and fucking and Tom Holland is like fucking beside himself because. Obviously, like he just watched Aunt May die, like in his yep. in his arms, he's filled right? with rage, blaming himself. Like he's out for right. revenge at this point. Yes, yes, okay. And so what? Are the, and so like all three of them together 
like share tragedy. Okay. So Tommy McGuire has obviously uncle Ben and he's like, that was my fault. Like I could have stopped that guy and I didn't stop that guy. And because I didn't like uncle Ben died and that's my fault. I did that. Okay. And then Andrew Garfield's like, I tried to save Gwen Stacy. She fell off a building and I couldn't catch her. Uh, and it, and that's and my Andrew fault. Garfield's performance in those scenes. Like you feel it. Oh. I'm not a huge Garfield fan. Like I've, I've enjoyed a few things he's in, but I honestly didn't really un like, like I didn't really understand the like, and it was, I didn't understand that in the amazing Spider-Man that that was really like his emotional. Yeah. Crux. Well, because it happens in like the movie that everybody forgets. Because it's it's the whole mm. scene where he tries to save Gwen, Gwen Stacy, shoots the web, and breaks her back. Like, in that movie, like, that scene broke my heart watching that movie. Like, I bawled at yeah. that part because you're like, oh, shit. Like, he tried to save her, and then she died. But then the whole rest of the movie is kind of dog shit. So, you like, you feel bad for crying at that scene. Well, and also, like, in the comics, that kind of, the same yeah. thing kind of happens. Like, it's, I mean, it's in, in the comics, it's the goblin, like, throws Gwen Stacy off a bridge and, you know, he tries to save her and he can't. And, you know, she dies or whatever. And, like, you know, Parker's all, like, upset it about it. About the same Gwen way, Stacy. too, right? Like, he shoots her with but the then, web like, and breaks her back. Something like that, yeah. But then, like, he meets MJ, and then it's like, okay, well, Gwen who? You know, you just... So I guess, like, I didn't really... You know, you don't really think... I Like, I didn't really think twice about it watching it because I was like, oh, it's Gwen Stacy. Yeah, she dies in the comics. Like, But, it like, as soon as he, like you hear him talk about it in this movie, and I'm like, yeah, this... Like that was really yeah. fucking rough. Well, and you look him. at it too. What I what I really like what they did with the Spider Man because they didn't pull him out like you know, right at the end of Spider Man three or right at the end of this Amazing Spider Man two. It's like them present day. So you know, it's yes. like forty something Peter Parker in the you know two thousand Spider Man. It's probably thirty ish yes. something Spider Man in the Amazing Spider Man. And with the Andrew Garfield Spider Man, he hasn't found MJ yet. Like, it feels like he's still struggling right. with that, like, torture of, you know, yeah. He is. He says he is. And you, like, he did a great job getting that across, I think. Oh. Like, oh not playing God. a part for almost a decade. So and probably, like, completely, like, putting that aside at this point. And. Yeah, because he had to, because everybody was probably giving yeah. him shit uh, for and it. It's kind of meta. But he really plays that too, because he's like, "Man, I'm not special. Like, I'm fucking dog shit. I suck. <laughs> I'm Spider Man three. And the crowd's like, "Yeah, Man, yeah. No, I feel bad. Like, maybe, maybe I should watch those two again. <laughs> I should rewatch <laughs> oh, those nope. movies. Yep. I should give them shit. another Sorry. chance." <laughs> um. So okay. So the three of them are together. And, you know, and Toby's talking about Uncle Ben and Andrew Garfield's talking about Gwen Stacy. And obviously Tom Holland now has um, Aunt May. But it made me realize that, like, Peter never has, hasn't had, didn't have his Uncle Ben moment. We just assumed he did. We just assumed he did. Like, he never, had, like, there was never that moment like you don't see that moment where uh where he's like where he you know basically like resolves himself to be like this is this is why I need to be I this is why I have to be Spider-Man. Like I think that's where he assume almost basically like assumes the assumes the the res, you know responsibility yeah. For lack of a you know pun intended, he assumes the responsibility of being Spider Man and, and, and what intentionally that intentionally or unintentionally because I mean they kind of like in the first Spider Man movie you're kind of like oh well is there isn't there and I think we all kind of filled in the blanks ourselves but Marvel did a good yeah. job of leaving it vague enough to have this moment and all three of them say they say one of the corniest lines in the history of fucking comic books. But yeah. it works because he starts it. Sean, you know what this is? You know what this is? I can tell you exactly what this is. This is what the whole fucking Martha is my mom too moment yeah. should have been. That's what it should have been. It should have been this. 
Like DC was trying to do this and they couldn't, but yeah. that's, this is how you do it. The, where the three of them say the same yep. cheesy ass fucking line together. Last thing she said and to they're me like, with that. great power. And that's what it, Oh my God. Comes great responsibility. How do you know that phrase? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. That is a hundred percent what that, what it should have been. That's what that whole so moment. You're, you're telling me is been. Marvel's like, Oh, we're going to steal the Martha moment and make it good. Oh, and by the way, we're going to steal the multiverse idea and make it better. <laughs> good luck flashpoint no fuck. yeah that moment i mean because you like i love it because like you see because they say it and like you like how many times have you heard that fucking phrase like you've heard it umpteen times this is the first time i've heard that phrase and like 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 felt the weight yeah. of it you know what well, i'm saying I think in the moments too like, like you know seeing uncle ben in like the 2000s like maybe in that moment you felt something but going back and watching it, like you've already seen it, it doesn't hold as much weight. You know, the Gwen Stacy thing, like you said, like, well, I mean, you know, I knew it was going to happen. And so you've got like 30 years or I could probably like 20 years of these experiences and they've just put it together in the perfect like 30 second thing. Like it's not so yeah. much like seeing the moment, it's seeing how it truly affected each character and each character played it yeah. well because I mean, Tobey Maguire still looks kind of like a goofy dude, right? Like, he's goofy Spider-Man. Right. You got cool Spider-Man, and then you got, like, you know, I don't know what you would call Holland Spider-Man. But <laughs> all three of those have, like, a very different kind of take on Spider-Man, but in that moment, you see it all shared. Yeah. It just all comes together in, like, a perfect, you know, Kleenex box of emotions. Yeah, because she sa- because he says it. He's like, oh, she said this God, to me. God, and when she said and it, too. Both of them are like... Uncle Ben said it to us. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh my God, they're all fucking sharing their tragedy together and they're like finding strength in it. And yeah. I can't, I can't take it. And then this. when, I mean, it's too much. And, and so jumping back, like when Aunt May said it, like when she said it first, I was expecting it to be kind of like, oh, well, that's what Uncle Ben said or something like that. But right away, you're right. like, oh shit, like she's her, his Uncle Ben. Like yeah. all the weight, all the stuff we've put like, in. That's yeah. his that's his tragedy. Yeah. And then and then that's when you that's when it clicks in your head, like, oh my god, like all three of these all three of these guys, like they have to like have this tragedy happen in order for them to, you know, f- like be who they are. And you realize that Tom Holland never had his, but he just yeah. had his. Oh, oh my god. Okay. So now I'm going to jump to the one one hiccup I had with this movie. And the one hiccup I feel like a lot of people had with this movie. Um, when when did we decide that Ned could do magic? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I get it. You know, like, the, hey, that's how we're going to bring. Well, I mean, his, that's his, how we're going to bring the other Spider-Man grandma, in. That's how we're going to have him show up. always said he was special. Well, and, and to be I fair, mean, he didn't bring him into the universe. They were already there. He just opened portals where they were at in the universe. So right. I I give so, yeah. a little leeway. Ned, like if it was him reaching into the, the multiverse to pull him in. Well, if Ned isn't in the next Doctor Strange movie, <laughs> then I'm calling bullshit. Well, I did like the little interaction where uh, there were basically something about like, oh, yeah, I found him. He's like, wait, you did that? He's like, yeah. Oh, interesting. Walks away. <laughs> Uh, so I guess, do you want, I mean, kind of tying into the moments that made you kind of weep. So you, you got the first one, the second one. Yeah. What was your third one? Yep. Sean, you know what my third one was? Well, there's two more I have. Okay. I assume well, this is going to be the same one. So, so, so let's, let's move forward a bit. So, so the three Spider-Man get together and then they start do they're, they're they science together. They do. And they all have uh, they not only do they science together, but they have their own like it's almost like they have their own little yeah, specialties. Yeah. Like they all have their own unique thing that they're doing. Uh, that was, well, yes. And yep, to tie yep. to that, I love that they address the whole web shooter thing because yeah. uh, I mean, yeah. me, I'm not like it wasn't huge in the comics. So like when Spider Man Tobey Maguire came out and he could shoot out of his hands, I was like, oh, that's cool. Like that's Spider Man, and everybody's like, no, no. No, <laughs> I think you, when you say everyone, yeah. you mean me. So when the the uh, Andrew Garfield one came out and he's using the machine, you're like, oh yeah, that's how Spider Man should be. 
But I love that they talked about You're that. Right. It's like so, like, like how do you make it? And it's like I don't know. It's just like breathing. It's like do you do you shoot it out of other places? He's like no. <laughs> I mean, it's it's cool, like you know. You know, one of them was like, "It comes yeah. out of your dick." Does it come out of your dick? What about your ass? Do you, can you shoot webs out? It's of like, your do you ass? ever? And I like that they kind of like, do, do you ever run out of webs? Like sometimes I run out of webs. He's like, "Well, yeah, you know, there was this one time, like existential crisis." And like, I like that they. I mean, they. I mean, like, if you're a kid just in the MCU, like you haven't seen any of the other ones, it probably goes over your head completely. But if you've spent, like I said, 20-some years seeing these movies and growing up with them, you're like, oh, I get that reference. Yep. Um, so, so yeah, so not only do we have the moment of the three of them, like, sciencing together, because they science together because they're trying to come up with the uh, the the methods to... Save everybody. Uh, yep. Neutral, yeah, neutralize the villains, right? But then there's the three of them hanging out at the Statue of Liberty, and they're just fucking shooting the shit. They're just shooting the shit and be bopping around. And Andrew Garfield's like, I'm Spider-Man number three. And they're like, no, you're not. No, you're not. You're Spider-Man number one. You're the you are awesome. We you we think you're awesome. And he's like, thanks, guys. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Okay, so three Spider-Man versus four villains. Yep, because we don't know where Doc Ock is. Supposedly he's fixed. And I wanted that fight sequence to go on for four I hours. I wanted them to start just, I just wanted them to just like punch and fight for, I four would have been hours. great with That's like, cause you start seeing the, the ripple effect of everything. Like you get a, I, I want to, I wish I could go back and identify everything you see. The only one I really noticed was Rhino, but like, I would have loved to seen like all these other like baddies coming through that they had to fight. I noticed there was one I noticed that I'll, I'll tell you about in a second because so the fight, the fight's going on and they're all fighting each other. Uh, MJ falls from the top of Statue of Liberty and Tom Holland's like, Holy shit. I got to grab her. And he misses. He tries to grab her and yeah, misses. green goblin hits him. Oh my God, Sean. Okay. We got, we got, we got to get intimate for this. Okay. Because after that happens, Andrew Garfield leaps and he fucking saves Mary Jane. Yep. He got his redemption and like, oh my God. And you can see it in his fucking face. If he doesn't win an Oscar for that moment. Oh, I'm like, I'm, oh my God. Like he, you see him grab her and like, and they land and he just has this look on his face. Like I did it. Like I fucking did it. Well, there's so like so many like even like even MJ's like, are you okay? He's like, because it's fine. the comic book kind of like you know, oh, you okay? Yeah, are you oh. okay? Yeah, but he played because I mean, could you imagine the wave of emotions? Like he's been sitting on that for 15 years, where he tried to save. He just he just yeah he just got done explaining. It. He's like I've been I've been like this is like been you know, like an emotional weight that I've carried for most of yeah. my adult fucking life. It's like whenever, and I got the second chance and I, and, and, and I, and I, and I, I, I did well, And it. I think there's like, there's so many things to it. Cause it's like, yeah, the, I did it, but then there's, you know, like the, the redemption maybe a little bit like, oh, okay. Like maybe I am worthy. Cause that was just a mistake that happened. Nobody's to blame. You know, there's, yeah, you know, I can't see that one. That's well, the one yeah. that was honestly the one that had me fucking like, like I almost like loud. Yeah, cried it in, was in the theater at that. Like I'm talking to you about it and it's fucking well, and the th- like, me. so it starts happening. You're like, Oh, I was like, Oh shit. Hopefully it's not like a repeat, right? Like hopefully it's not Tom Holland killing her. And all of a sudden, bam, gets hit by green goblin. You're like, Oh fuck. Like they're going to kill two people in this. <sighs> Okay, so, and this is something that I actually, that I wanted to bring up at the start of the fight. Since you got, so you got Tobey Maguire, you got Andrew Garfield, right? And then you've got these other villains, right? Since these guys just showed up, and as far as we know, there's no plans for them to be in anything else. Did it not feel like everybody was in danger? Yeah. Like, you're like, 
oh my god, like anybody, like they could kill well, these guys. And it's not so like you think about yeah, all those people if they kill any of them, it's not going to affect the timelines of the movies because the movies that we see each of these characters is like you said either post their death right. or post the the movies that were released. Because it's old man Tobey yeah, Maguire. Like they already yeah. Happened. So if they die, it's like, oh well, yeah, okay. Well, we weren't getting a, a you know Spider Man four two thousand or a Spider Man three Amazing. Yeah. So sure, do whatever. So then you're sitting there going like, like these people are in like legitimate, like you like you like even like if you're meta if you're if you're into the meta of the situation you're like these guys could die, all these people could die, and it's not you know like so and so like. It added a, a lot to those moments where you're like, holy shit. Oh, God, please don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Okay. 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 It's fine. It's fine. They're fine. Everybody's <laughs> fine. Um, So he saves Mary Jane. That's a big moment. Yeah. And then they um, kind of start getting into where they're, they're fixing everybody. So they fix, you know, Sandman. They fix the lizard yep. guy. Uh, Doc Ock shows up to kind of save the day. Uh, yep, Doc Ock shows up to save which I, the day. I enjoyed. I thought that was a good kind of because even in the second one, Doc Ock never felt like a bad guy at all. Like, no, he just felt like he was. Uh, no, I don't want to say misunderstood, but I would say that like, I mean, you see what happens. Like the little, the little inhibitor chip fries out, and that basically kind of like it doesn't turn him evil, but basically like he kind of falls under the sway of. This other yeah. voice, well, when, similar to the when Green they Goblin. fix it, he's like, "Oh my god, it's so quiet." Yeah, yeah. And then, and then you're sitting there, and you're like, "Yeah, oh. you're like poor guy, like, like, like what the? F-? Yeah, you're like, oh, it's he's not a bad yeah. guy, like, yeah, like." To- and then it kind of puts you like on on Toby on not Toby on uh, on Tom Holland's side, like, yeah, yeah, he should save, he should fix all yeah. these people. Because look what he did to Doc. Like he just except fixed Green Doc Goblin. Up. Fuck that guy. He's trying to kill everybody. <laughs> um. So yeah. So you're right. So Goblin and Tom Holland have like their big have their big. Before fight. we get to Goblin, so they fix Electro, and I I love the interaction between Electro and Amazing Spider Man. Because, you know, he goes up there, he gets him cured, you know, Electro's like, man, I'm just going to be normal again. He's like, dude, you weren't normal. Basically having the same conversation I was had with him. It's like, you were always the smartest, yep. you're great, yada, yada, yada. And Electro's like, man, you're from Queens, you help the poor. I really thought you'd be black. <laughs> and he kind of looks off camera and it's like very meta. It's like, there's got to be a black Spider-Man out there somewhere, right? <laughs> And like the crowd when that happened, I know you didn't have much of a crowd, but the crowd is all like, yeah, there is Miles Morales, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> oh, I love that moment. Yeah, ma, ma, ma. Uh, but Loved yeah, then it. we get the big kind of end sequence of Green mm-hmm. Goblin fighting yep. our MCU Spider-Man. And I feel like this was kind of like the Joker moment of like trying to push Batman over the limits, right? Like I want to show that you can kill and yeah, 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 you're right. And you know, Tobey Maguire, I think was the right choice to stop it from happening because he's kind of the older Spider-Man. He's kind of been through a bunch of stuff and, you know, jumping in to stop him from essentially going to the dark side. Cause I think he knows it's like, if you kill somebody, like there's no going back. Like it'll haunt you forever, mm-hmm. and that's that's not us. So I thought him jumping in in that moment was was really good. But like you said, like anybody's up for grabs, you know, we see him get stabbed, and I'm like, oh shit, he's gone. Like, oh my god, they killed yeah. Tobey Maguire. Oh no, now but what? Then you get a good. But you know what? Yep, yep. Has they have the they have the hero moment? It's like I've been stabbed before. <laughs> and okay, so. I don't know. Maybe this is your maybe this is your moment number four, but uh, the three Spider Men get together, and like right before they take off, they have like one last like bro hug. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that had me teared teared up. Like it was kind of like a oh man, like this is like I would want more of this, but this is probably the only time we'll ever get that. Like it felt like honestly, like that felt like a genuine fucking bro hug. You know what I mean? Like. I fucking love you guys. 
Like, I know you're me, but, like, you guys fucking Well, and it's rock. got so many layers, too, because you have, like, the actual cinematic layer where it's like, oh, my God, they're all Spider-Man. They're all Peter Parker. They know what they're going through. But even if you take it more of, like, a realistic approach, like, all three of those guys know what it's like to carry the weight of being Spider-Man, like, as actors yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. So, you know, I don't know if that seeped into that moment at all, but I feel like it, I feel like it had to have at least a little bit. But, yeah, he's got to go to Doctor Strange. He's like, hey... Does make everybody strange? forget who Peter Parker is. That'd fix this, right? Because essentially you're getting the universe is cracking. Everybody's starting to come through. Um, I saw, I, I know yeah. you said you saw Rhino. I saw Craven the Oof, Hunter. Which hasn't been introduced yeah. in any of the stows yet. No. And no. so that's one of those, like, I would love a screen capture of all those moments because I bet there's tons of stuff. I Yep, I like bet you're, there you're is. trying to tell me there's not some kind of like Wolverine type thing in there or some kind of X Men or Fantastic Four or anything yeah. and everything. I mean, you've got, I mean, what other villains could you Blade? add at this point? You've got, uh, you could add Scorpion, you could add, um, I'm trying to think. I think Hy- well, no, Hydra Man, maybe. I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, Tom Holland goes and he's like, well, you should make everybody forget and that would fix everything. Yep. And he's like, well, I'll, every, he's like, if I do it, then everybody's going to forget. He's like, I'm going to forget and everybody's going to forget and your friends are going to forget. And yeah, like, he's like, no one's going to yep. know. And he pulls that trigger and everybody's going to forget, but he gets a moment with, uh, MJ and Nate. Or Ned, sorry. And um, that moment, like, when she's like, you come find me, like, had me, like, you think about, like, you know, people who have Alzheimer's or just, like, like, you imagine, like, being a person that just gets forgotten. Was that your note? A little bit. I mean, because, like, you think about, like, you know, it's like you and I, like, what happens if one day you're just like, I don't know who Sean is. Like, who are you? That or the reverse happen. that if I'm like, who are you? No. You're like, I'm your buddy. We've talked for like 400 episodes. I was like, that's not me. You're like, but eat, mm, eat the beaver. No, nope. I'm like, don't be crude. <laughs> 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 but it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's a very scary thing. I think in terms of like just life and everything to be forgotten. And in that moment, you know, she's like, you come find me. And I was like, Oh my God. Like, and she's like, I love you. I was like, Oh God. And he starts to say it. No, she, she doesn't does. say it. He doesn't. He's like, oh, okay. Because okay. she says, I love you. And okay. he's like, I, and she's like, no, you tell me that when you find me. And, you know, God damn it, Richard. He goes at the end, has a whole thing yep. planned. And when he sees it, like, oh, my God, they're better off without me. I mean, did you really expect that to happen? Like, did you really expect him to be like, oh, I'm going to tell you everything. And then she's like, oh, my God, no, I remember. Not that- I knew the second he walked in there, I was like, he's not. Yeah, I mean, shit. that was kind of expected. I mean, because you're not going to like, you know, 30 first dates it or whatever. It's just not going to be possible. Right, right. And, you know, I, I don't know if we've ever talked about that, but like the magic of like relationship creation, I don't think you can like set up in like an hour. Like if our minds got wiped and no, like I, agree. I had no clue who you were, like you can't show up and be like, no, no, let me. Let me talk to you for an hour. We'll be best friends forever. I'm like, who the fuck is this crazy person trying to touch my dick? (laughs) (laughs) No, you let me do this. I'm like, you're just growling at it. (laughs) We do this all the time. (laughs) You usually did it for me. Did I? Yeah. Yeah. I thought I'd, you know, get it started. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Just a couple kind of quick hit type things. So, like, I thought... um, Toby and Andrew Garfield, when they first got introduced, it felt like it took them a little bit to get like in the groove of being Spider-Man again. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe a little. I was just going to say that like when, when you get to the end of this movie, you realize that this entire movie has been an origin story. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it has. Because by the time you get to the end of this movie, like he's Spider-Man he doesn't have any fancy fucking technology. He's back to yeah. He's <clears throat> he's got he's he lives he's he's a high school graduate 
who's who's really not smart, even a high school graduate lives in a yeah, shit because he was going for his GED. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Lives in a shitty apartment in New York City. In New York City, and he's gonna have to reintroduce himself to MJ. He's gonna have to find a job. Like this is it's year one. We're it's we we went to we got a we got a whole because somebody dies says with great power comes great responsibility. He fights a bunch of bad guys. Like you get an entire. Like, how the fuck do you do the origin story in the third yeah, movie, that's Sean? that's a good point. Well, it's funny, too. It's like Tom Holland's like, I don't want to play Batman in my 30s. And they're like, hey, guess what? We just announced another trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did like that uh, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man said that him and MJ were together. Um, they don't really talk yeah. much about it, but besides the fact that they're together, which I enjoyed, kind of knowing that, you know, after 20-some years, they're still together. Um, okay. Yeah, and the only yeah. other last piece. So at the very end, when he gets back to his hotel or his uh, apartment, and he's got a Lego figure that he puts on a stand. It's yep. a Palpatine, right? Which you look at that, and you're like, oh, well. I mean, Disney owns Marvel and, Di- and Star Wars, so okay. But I think what it is, Richard, is it shows that our Spider-Man did not succumb to the dark side. Okay. I was just thinking that he really liked Legos and That's Star Wars. That's what I Wars. thought at first, too, but then I looked at it a little bit deeper. <laughs> but I thought that was kind of a, a nice little nod. Because, um, I mean, he, he was very close. Like, you know, vengeance, you know, revenge, and he was stopped. Yeah. And, you know, now yeah. we're going to get the neighborhood Spider-Man that we love and enjoy. Yep. Now we're going to get, you know, like, like, it was like, okay, now it's time to... Start the Spider Man series. Yeah, I, w- I don't think he's gonna. Now it's time to. Now it's time to start Spider Man because now we have like your classic fucking neighborhood Spider Man year yeah. one. Even though he's been around for the last five years, but and I you know so we get through all that. The end credits. Um, the first one I thought was kind of cool because I did like seeing Tom Hardy back as Venom. Yeah, I was fine with it. I mean, it was. Was it ne- super necessary? Like, I'm glad they, ca- I'm glad they tacked it on yeah. at the end because I like, there's no way you could have stuck that in there and had it not like disjoint. Yeah. Everything. I'm a little upset that they like kicked him out right at the end. Um, I mean, obviously we got the symbiote still in our universe, which yeah. I don't know how that's going to play. I mean, it's kind of basically like, Oh, Hey, Sony's here, but it's not the Sony, you know, venom verse, but my question, my last question then is kind of going into the more bigger scale of this. So Tom Hardy's not in this universe. Like we saw him get sucked out. How does, well, Tom Hardy isn't possibly Tom Hardy could be if there's another Eddie potentially. Brock. Yeah. But then how does Morbius play into this? Because if you look at the trailers for Morbius, it seems like it's in the MCU universe. Because there's posters, I, and then there is Michael Keaton as the Vulture. That's true. So, well, I guess like is 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 Tom Hardy just removed from the from the situation, or is that the movie is actually in the universe, the MC universe, and the Venom that is seen in the trailer is our MCU Venom? Maybe I don't know because I feel like that's a good opportunity to introduce like Blade and stuff like that. But I don't yeah. know. But that's kind of very, I very don't know future either. questions. But, you know, wrapping up. Well, I mean, Morbius isn't that far it's off, like January, is it? January, February, or March. It's within the next couple yeah, months. Yeah, yeah. So I guess yeah. we'll find out. But I I loved it. I was. I hope I'd go see it again. I don't know if I'll get a chance to or not. But definitely if when it's on Disney or wherever I can stream it, I'm streaming it. My kids are actually at the theater oh, right nice. now. So they're going to come home just bawling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What you need to do, Richard, right when they walk in the door, just grab them both. I think because it's just a two, right? Grab them yeah. both by the hand, just look them straight in the eye and say, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> and then collapse. <laughs> <laughs> and then Amanda comes in with a hoodie, drinking a <laughs> alcoholic eggnog. But uh, that's all I kind of had on this movie, Richard. Do you have anything else you want to add? Um, yes, I'm going to closing thoughts this because I had a thought and this is, this is how I'm going to wrap it up. So, uh, we have talked 
about fan service in a movie and how there's good fan service and there's bad fan service. But I think if you ask somebody to define like what's good fan service and what's bad fan service, uh, I don't think that you would get a, a coherent response because it's hard. It's hard to pin down with this movie. I think I have cracked that code on what the difference is between good fan service and bad fan service. So when I was a kid, well, I don't want to say kid, like, you know, junior high age, there was a Spider-Man movie in the theater and I went and saw it and I was like, Oh my God, they put fucking, they made a Spider-Man movie like, and he's swinging around on webs and he's fighting the green goblin this is fucking amazing. And I couldn't talk to anybody (laughs) about it because they would hit me with sticks. And then I saw another Spider-Man movie and I also thought it was good. And there was a Dr. Octopus in it. And I thought it was, I thought it was just as good, if not better than the first one. And I was super excited. I couldn't talk to anybody about it because I, they would hit me with sticks and so I've, I've watched, I mean, there was Spider-Man three, but you know, <laughs> but there were, you know, there were other Spider-Man, there were other Spider-Man movies. There was, there's been shows on Netflix. There's been const, there's been countless MCU movies, TV shows and stuff like that. And then this movie comes out and it basically tells you in 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 a very like in a not so subtle way what this movie does is it says hey do you remember those movies that you watched like 20 years ago do you remember that you liked them like do you remember how you thought they were cool and you couldn't tell anybody because they would hit you with sticks well guess what guess what motherfucker you were right. You were right this entire time. These these things are cool. The guy swinging around on webs, like that's cool. That's fucking cool. And you saw it 20 years ago and you thought it was cool and you were right. And you know why you were right? Because look, you're going to see the same shit right now and you're going to think it's just as cool. Like you were right. Like that's basically what that's what good fan service is. Good fan service is a intellectual property saying, Hey, do you remember that shit that you really, really liked and you thought was cool? Well, guess what? You were right to like it because we're going to, because we're doing kind of the same. We're putting some of the same stuff in there and it's going to look just as good, if not better. And that's cool. And you were right to think it was cool. That's what good fan service is. And that's what this movie did. This movie made you like justified in liking Spider-Man for the last 20 years. And that's it. That's what I got. I like it. I think that's a great way to really kind of tie this together. Cause yeah, it is okay to like it. Everybody likes it now. Mm-hmm. And if you go see it, the first thing you got to do is you got to find other people to see it. And then you yeah. got to high five and be like, I saw Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah! Whap. And then you got to high five all your, everybody that's seen it because that's all you want to do after you walk out When you out high of five it, you got to go the whip, the whip. <clears throat> yep. All right. Well, if you haven't seen it and you got this far and you're like, well, I don't know if I want to see it yet. I hope you're going to go see it now. So let me do a little bit of housekeeping so you can get out to the theater and check out this amazing movie. Yeah. Visit our website. We're at languagebros.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at languagebro. Email us at bros at languagebros.com. And we'd like to thank our two favorite Spider-Man fans, Wendy and Aaron. You are the Tobey Maguire's and the Andrew Garfield's oh, of our hearts. Yes, you are. All right. Well, is there anything else before we close her out? If you, if you, if you haven't seen this movie and you listen to this all the way to the end, shame, yeah. shame, shame on I you. I mean, unless you don't have time to go see it shame and you're like, man, you. I just need somebody to like fanboy out for like an hour and a half on my drive to someplace. I mean, yeah, but you had time, <laughs> you got time, you could see it. 
Like you listen to us fucking jerk it off for 90 minutes. Like you could, you, you could, you could have gone yeah, at and this seen point, this. I mean, I'm not going to condone it, but you could illegally get it at this point. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. All right. Well, that's all the bro. have this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And remember, don't be a why. Be a why not. not. Great power, Richard. Comes great responsibility. Doesn't mean as much when you say it. <laughs>